I am deeply honored to introduce the Lancet Regional Health Europe series on inequalities and disparities in cardiovascular health. Despite major advances in prevention and treatment, cardiovascular disease remains the leading cause of death globally, but not all populations are affected equally. This series focuses on four particularly vulnerable groups, women, racial and ethnic minorities, older adults, and individuals with mental health conditions. This condition that has long been under research, resulting in persisting gaps in our understanding of sex-specific risk factors symptoms, and especially outcomes. Although women tend to develop ischemic heart disease about a decade later than men, they often experience higher mortality once diagnosed with ischemic heart disease. This paradox is clearly reflected in the global body of disease data, which shows that across many European regions, women have a lower prevalence of ischemic heart disease, but higher mortality in those with ischemic heart disease. However, this is not the case everywhere. The fact that disparities vary across countries suggests that they are not the product of biology alone, but also of social and structural influences. These variation data remind us that these disparities are not fixed truths, but shifting realities that can and must be changed. Women may carry an inherent biological vulnerability during heart attacks, but it sees the modifiable factors, including timely access to care, early symptom recognition, lifestyles, and deeply embedded gender norms that ultimately determine whether that vulnerability becomes a fatal disparity. This calls for both universal and locally tailored solutions. Across all contexts, we must improve early recognition of symptoms in women, increase their representation in clinical trials, develop sex specific public health strategies, and update clinical guidelines to reflect how ischemic heart disease presents differently in women. Real progress demands equity, and equity begins with understanding diversity. Cardiovascular disease remains the leading cause of death globally, but its impact is not equally felt. Racialized and ethnically diverse communities experience higher rates of CVD and its risk factors, compounded by systemic barriers to care. These inequities are driven by the intersection of cultural identity, racism, gender, and broader social disadvantage. While ethnicity reflects shared cultural traditions and ancestry, race is a social construct that captures the lived effects of systemic racism. Both influence cardiovascular outcomes and access to prevention and treatment. Across high-income countries, disparities in CVD and CVD risk factors persist. These disparities have multiple influential factors, including differences in lifestyle and health behavior, health literacy, and healthcare access. Genetic variants, which vary by ethnic group, can influence body fat distribution and cardiometabolic risk factors, yet are small contributors to the overall rates of CVD. Intersecting factors such as gender and socioeconomic factors are crucial to consider when attributing risk and disease to ethnic and race variations. Indigenous peoples' burden of CVD requires special consideration, including an understanding of their histories of colonization and the extremely challenging circumstances they faced. This helps us to better understand their current lifestyle patterns lower access to health care, and reduce trust in government care programs. Addressing ethnic and racial disparities requires better data collection, including self-reported ethnicity and race, 
individual and population level health strategies to reduce health equity gaps. Developments in the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular disease over recent decades have led to reductions in the number of people dying early from it. As CVD is a leading cause of death in Europe, these advances have played a major role in increasing life expectancy across the region. Whilst these achievements are rightly celebrated, the majority of people now seeking treatment for CVD are older adults, typically aged 75 years and over. And this shift in the age of patients presents a number of important challenges. Many current treatment approaches have been developed from clinical trials in which older patients have been underrepresented. Moreover, older patients often present with a range of complicated factors. Physiological changes associated with aging, the presence of multiple chronic conditions, including frailty and dementia, and the use of multiple medications are common in this population. In addition, many older adults face social challenges such as isolation, poverty, and reduced access to healthcare. Treating CVD in older adults therefore requires a patient-centered, holistic approach with a greater emphasis on outcomes that matter most to them, such as functionality and quality of life. Addressing inequalities in CVD outcomes for older adults demands coordinated efforts among healthcare providers, patients, caregivers, and policymakers. With a proportion of older people projected to rise further, it is essential that governments and healthcare funders invest in systems that meet the complex needs of older adults and support healthier aging across Europe. Mental disorders are common in the general population, especially major conditions such as depression and anxiety disorders. Together, they affect about 25% of people at some point in their life. Mental disorders are also very prevalent among people with cardiovascular disease. Up to 40% of them have a mental health condition. Mental disorders are linked to cardiovascular disease events and worse prognosis of cardiovascular disease, increasing the risk for heart attacks and cardiovascular death between 50% and 100%. Cardiovascular disease also can trigger mental disorders. And this can create a spiral of risk and disability among those with mental health problems and those with cardiovascular problems. People with mental disorders often receive suboptimal health care. There are large gaps in diagnosis and management of mental disorders among those with medical conditions, including cardiovascular disease, and also gaps in diagnosis and management of cardiovascular disease among individuals with mental disorders. Ultimately, the causes of disparities based on mental health are multi-level and multifactorial and are rooted in social determinants of health, in the structural healthcare systems and healthcare access and quality. So, interventions that address these aspects are likely to provide the largest impacts to reduce disparities and improve outcomes for both mental health and cardiovascular health. At the policy level, there is a need for interventions to address social factors and increase access to care. At the clinical level, there is a need for an integrated multidisciplinary approach to clinical care to address the complex needs of this vulnerable population. Cardiovascular effects as all, but this burden is not equally shared. As this series uh, highlights, many disparities persist, not because they are inevitable, but because we have not acted decisively enough. The series offers a clear evidence-based roadmap for action. We invite you to explore the full series and be part of a movement to talk equitable cardiovascular health for all. The time for change is now. Together, we can move from knowledge to action and from inequity to equity.